Hello my friends and welcome to a new session of our preparation for the theory exam in the Netherlands. In today's session we are going to talk about lighting, bad weather conditions and accident. So we are going to discuss um, things like if you hit an animal while you are traveling from a city to another, let's say um, there was a deer running and you couldn't avoid the deer, you hit the deer, but the deer is, was fine. The deer was managed to still walk and go away. Are you allowed to leave the deer by itself and continue on your journey? So we're going to answer this question today during the session. First, let's talk about lighting. Uh, by lighting we mean many other things that uh, are used to give signals to the other users on the road. Lights also can be used uh, to avoid accidents or danger. So there are several types of vehicle signals. First we have for example the high beam flashers. Maybe there is something dangerous on the road and you find drivers coming from the opposite direction giving high beam. Here you understand that uh, there is something uh, that you should be aware of. Maybe there is some accident. So um, this is the first type of the signals. Next we have the brake lights. As soon you hit the brakes, as soon you press the brakes, the uh, brake lights will be uh, on automatically. So uh, this will give of course the signal to the other drivers that you are slowing down or you are stopping. And we have our turning signals. Uh, it could be also the hazard lights. So if all turning signals are on at the same time, this uh, gives the indication that your car maybe is not able to uh, move. So other drivers will be aware and they will avoid your car. We have the reverse light. Of course, when you uh, apply reverse in gears, uh, the reverse light will be on. This will be uh, warning the either pedestrians or drivers that you are reversing and of course we have the horn this is uh, an audible warning and we have uh, visual communications and gestures so sometimes uh, you just uh, give a gesture to the other drivers that they have to uh, stop or they have to go back maybe sometimes you just uh, move your head and they will understand that you see them for example so visual communication and gestures also are considered as uh, as signals that are used within the vehicle to uh, warn the other drivers now there are some etiquettes that we must adhere to um, while driving of course you cannot use the high beam to warn the other drivers or wa warn the other users that there is police for example um, maybe uh, you can warn them you can use the flashlight or the high beam flashers to tell them maybe there is accident to give them information to be aware of uh, some damage on the road maybe but if you use this uh, to warn them that there are other police officers so they will slow down and they won't get fined. This is uh, not allowed and um, and we should not do this of course. Uh, it's also not allowed to use the flashers um, to uh, tell the drivers in front of you that you want to overtake them. Um, the correct way to do this is to put the turning signal to the uh, left and once they see that there is the turning signal is on um, they they should give you away it's also forbidden to greet with signs ahead uh, so remember that there are other road users uh, on the road so maybe if you use horn uh, to greet your friend who is coming from the other way the, the other driver might uh, understand that he is doing something wrong so this is not allowed to you uh, do such a thing flipping off signs of contempt and even discomfort are forbidden so uh, here we have two signs here this one of course is unpleasant we should not do that and the blue one always stay positive on the road always uh, try to be a better person than the others maybe the other drivers um, are let's say uh, rude or let's say that they are uh, not committing strictly to the rules so you always have to be a better driver than them there are uh, different kinds of symbols that we can see on the dashboard with features being added to the cars uh, almost every day all those uh, symbols and lights are increasing so uh, we don't have to memorize everything but there are a few uh, symbols that we must memorize in order to know 
uh, what's the vehicle is trying to tell us let's discuss those uh, this one is among the most common one this check engine light you have a symbol of an engine it's orange color and this telling me that uh, there is some problem with the engine probably it's like electrical problem so nothing serious uh, you can always keep driving um, your car well you see this simple um, usually it's just like the computer uh, is not reading the information correctly or there is some uh, minor problem usually those problems are not fatal uh, of course you should check your car whenever you see this simple but um, in most cases uh, you can drive your car normally this is telling me that there is a problem with the ABS system so the brakes uh, they might be working we have problem with the ABS system the ABS system is the system that helps the car to uh, stop uh, faster than the normal braking so there is some system that control that and it's uh, and it's available now in most cars now this symbol is telling me that the front airbag is off. As you may remember, we discussed this earlier. If I want to um, put a kid at the front seat, so I should always put uh, the child seat uh, facing forward. If I want to put the child seat like in this picture over here, you can see the head of the child is here and the seat is like this. So his head is uh, actually on the airbag itself. So let's say, an accident happened the airbag will be up deployed and the child will be flying to this direction so in order to prevent that from happening we can switch off the front airbag if we have such a seat um, usually you can find a button that can uh, switch off the front airbag and once you press that button you have this symbol on the dashboard to confirm that uh, the front airbag is off and you can buckle up your uh, child seat no problem in this position this is telling me that uh, the rear fog light is on and this is telling me that the cruise control is on the cruise control of course is the system that uh, keep the vehicle running at a certain speed uh, without you uh, pushing the accelerator so you just set a speed and the car will keep uh, maintaining that speed and there are some more complicated systems now um, cars can slow down and speed up depending on the cars in front of you and even now the more advanced systems uh, cars can read the road signs and they uh, can adjust the speed automatically so let's say the uh, speed limit is 100 the car by itself it will follow that speed range this is telling me that the headlights or the dim licht or dim lights are on. Um, as we said always, there are uh, different ways to uh, describe the same thing. Uh, in the Netherlands, maybe, or in Europe in general, they follow the British English. But if you have like a different type of accent, like American accent or maybe uh, South African or Australian accent, try always to uh, study the words or the terms in British English that will help a lot uh, this one the blue one is telling me that the high beam is on um, this is telling me that the parking light is on so the parking lights are the lights when you start applying the, the lights it's the first option so the first tick you hear the parking lights are on we will talk uh, more about those um, in a few moments this is telling me that the lubrication inside the engine is low so the f the oil level is is low um, the engine must be lubricated at all times otherwise it could damage the engine so when you see such a sign uh, always try to uh, stop your car when when it's safe uh, in a safe area of course and then uh, check what's the problem maybe you can add up some oil till you visit the, your mechanic or something uh, if the um, engine is overheating uh, so maybe uh, the coolant is leaking and there is nothing to cool the engine the engine is very hot this is also very bad for the engine so um, if it's possible for you to stop and check your car you should do that and here uh, the battery is low maybe or there's some problem with the battery so um, the car uh, might not be able to start 
or uh, this could damage something with the electrical system in the car. And this is of course telling me that the fuel level is low. Uh, there's a little trick by the way, uh, if let's say you're driving your car, you know if you have the uh, fuel tank on the right or the left. So always when you go to the petrol station, you know uh, from where to fill up the fuel. But let's say you borrowed your uh, friend's car, how to know that uh, the fuel tank is on the right or, or on the left. Usually there is always um, an arrow so if it's like this you see this simple over here and you see like something like this so this is telling me that I should uh, park my car with the uh, fuel door on the right so I can just fill up the car like this or sometimes you see it on the other side so it's like this so you should park your car um, and on the other way or use a different lane or a different uh, machine to fill up your car all right this is telling me that the front fog lights are on so you should memorize those and you should always know um, each simple of those maybe at the exam they just uh, give you a picture of those and ask you uh, what is the simple what does it indicate what does it mean and it should mean like if you see this simple this means that your fog lights are on this is telling me that the turning lights or maybe the hazard lights are on different um, it uh, some cars when you put a signal both directions will be on but most cars when you put a signal to the right only the right one will be on it will be blinking on and off and when you put it to the left of course uh, it will be blinking on and off to the left but some cars in order to save some money they put only one bulb so whenever you put right or left both will work um, this is telling me that there is a problem with the airbag so when you visit your mechanic, maybe you should uh, tell them about this in order to check. So this is telling me that the parking brakes are applied. Uh, sometimes um, you may forget to release the parking brake before you drive. So you see this light on the dashboard. So when you see this light and your car is moving slowly or uh, when you see this light in general, you should always check your parking brake. And this is telling me, of course, that there is someone inside the car not uh, buckling up or not wearing the seat belt. And this means that um, some doors might, might be open. So I have to check the doors and make sure all the doors are uh, properly closed. Now let's talk about the parking light. When we use those type of light, um, it's called Stadlichten in Dutch. Use it while, uh, let's say you, you are stopping your vehicle. Um, let's say uh, somebody called you while you are on the highway and you cannot use your phone while driving. So maybe you stop on the roadside and um, you answer the phone call. So when you stop, you should put on the parking lights on. Of course, if the visibility is poor, um, doesn't matter if you are inside or outside the city. Sometimes uh, you're allowed to park your car and you're staying inside your car. Um, so you just keep those lights on just to tell the other drivers or other road users that you are uh, still inside your car. You're just uh, parking your car or you're just waiting for someone maybe. Also, if let's say the police uh, ask you to stop on the side of the road, uh, you park or you stop your car uh, at the side of the road and you put on uh, the park light if the uh, weather conditions were bad or um, during let's say early morning or night time now let's talk about the dim light the dim lights are the most common lights that we use we can use it um, during the day you can use it during the night but there is a rule telling me that uh, whenever the lights on the street are on I should put my dim light on but no problem this type of light uh, you can use it anytime during the day or during the night nobody will give you a fine and nobody will uh, be bothered by the dim light of course also let's say you're driving during the day but the weather condition is not great uh, you should also use your dim light let's say it's rainy morning or so so you can use the dim light let's talk now about the high beam 
You can use this type of lights when it's dark and when dim light is not enough. So let's say I'm driving in a very dark place and there are no lights on the street. Uh, I need to know where I'm going. The dim lights are not enough, then I can start my high beams. Uh, however, there are some um, cases where I'm not allowed to use my high beam. Let's discuss those. I'm not allowed to, to use my high beams during the day. So unlike the dim light, if I use the high beams during the day, this will be disturbing to the other drivers. So I cannot use it during the day. Uh, in case that there are other road users coming from the opposite side, I mean by road users uh, like uh, drivers or pedestrians or even animals, um, this light will be disturbing for them. So maybe if let's say there is animal you see uh, on the opposite side, you, you are using your high beam. Uh, maybe they'll be scared and maybe they'll jump to the road and this will create an accident. So whenever there is or another road user, whoever or whatever that you road user is, we are not allowed to use the high beam. Uh, and of course, if there is short distance between my car and the car in front of me, uh, mirrors will reflect the high beam and it will disturb the uh, drivers driving in front of me. So always when I want, when I want to use my high beam, there should be uh, large distance between those cars, between my car and the car in front of me. Uh, now sometimes we can see this uh, police car parked on highways on the side of the road and we see this blue light is on. This is always telling us that uh, there, there might be something wrong on the road, maybe they're fixing the road, there's roadworks, maybe there is accident. Uh, we don't know. This is uh, just um, for us to tell us to slow down and be more careful. Now let's talk about turning signals. When should I use my turning signals? If I'm leaving the parking lot, if my car was parked and then I want to go on my journey, when I'm leaving the parking, I should use my uh, turning signals. When I'm overtaking, of course, there is the dance we spoke about. After you finish your dance, you put on your turning light depending on the uh, side that you're overtaking. So let's say I'm driving on the right lane and the right lane of the road is taking me to a highway. So even if I'm going straight, uh, but this lane is taking me to a highway, then I should put on my turning signal. This will tell the other drivers that um, I'm, I'm going inside the highway. Same thing if I'm leaving the highway, uh, I should also put on my turning signal. And of course, if I'm changing lane, uh, right or left, I should use my turning signal. And of course, while turning, that's why they are called turning signals. Now let's talk about things that make the visibility bad at night. If there's a driver from the opposite side using the high beam, uh, this will be very disturbing to me as a driver and uh, I won't be able to see the road very clearly. In modern cars, dim light is adjustable. So if it's set too high, it will disturb other drivers. So if the dim light is set to very high position, then it's same as high beam and it will be disturbing to the other road users. And also the sun during sunrise and sunset. If it's uh, in the horizon, it will be it will be difficult to see the road clearly. And let's say I'm driving a car with dirty windshield. If I'm driving with dirty windshield and then uh, the light hit the windshield, um, of course the light will escape from the undirty areas. It will be more focused, so it will also create disturbance. Now let's talk about driving when raining. What should we consider? What should we do while we drive in a rainy day? When it rains, road surface becomes smoother, meaning it becomes slippery. So safety distance must be larger than usual. It's uh, common sense, right? When you, you are, when you are driving on a slippery road, then it will take your car longer to stop. So you should always increase your safety distance. So always, while you are driving, you have always to adjust your safety distance and your speed according to the road condition. Keep in mind, if let's say uh, 
you came from the summer and then this is the first rain uh, the road will be very slippery in this condition you can see that like when it rains like the first rain or the second rain or so uh, if you look on the road you can see like rainbows like a lot of colors this is of course because uh, the cars are dripping dripping oil and this oil is getting mixed with the uh, water from the rain and it will create this rainbow colors but it will create also a possibility of accidents because the road will be more slippery it's very important to turn on your headlights when it rains this is of course for the other drivers to notice you in heavy rains you can turn on your front fog lights however uh, your your rear fog lights uh, must not be used when it's raining so <clears throat> The fog lights, let's say if it's heavy rain, you can use the front, but the rear ones, it's, it's, it's forbidden because it's really uh, disturbing and annoying for the other drivers. Sometimes they cannot see really the road. They will be completely blinded by the red light. The red light is very strong, the fog light itself. And when the rain comes over to even create um, a bigger problem. So uh, never, use the rear fog lights while driving however the front fog light can be used when it's a heavy rain now driving while snowing before you get into your vehicle make sure that your shoe are clear before you start driving what do you mean by uh, your shoe is clear Let, let's say if uh, you get inside your vehicle inside your car and there is snow at the bottom of your shoe and then let's say uh, you want to push the accelerator pedal and then your foot slip off uh, your car will go very fast and maybe you will have an accident so that's why to prevent such thing you should always make sure that your shoes are clear from the bottom before you go inside the car in areas where um, we have heavy snow we should always use winter tires and sometimes it's mandatory to use metal chains. The maximum speed uh, when we have our metal chains on is 50 kilometers per hour. We cannot exceed 50 kilometers. Now driving when uh, fog, you can turn on your rear fog light if visibility distance is less than 50 meters. So, um, how do we know if it's 50 meters remember when we talk like uh, on the side of the road we see those reflectors between each reflector and the other reflector is 50 meters so uh, how do I know if it's less than 50 if I can see only one reflector if I'm driving like this and I can see only this reflector I cannot see this reflector so it's meaning the visibility distance is less than 50 because I can see only one reflector then I'm allowed to use my rear fog light. The front fog lights can be used if visibility distance is less than 200 meters. You can measure it same way. In bad weather, as we said, you should always maintain larger safety distance. So it's also including the fog, of course. And you should always adjust your speed accordingly. Maybe uh, the fog start light, and maybe if you drive a few kilometers, the density of the fog will get thicker and heavier so you won't be able to see so always uh, change your speed according to the road condition in bad weather condition do not pass cars quickly and pay attention to the lines on the road so of course we have to know the road boundaries especially if it's like two ways one coming and one going so if i don't notice this line between the uh, lanes maybe I drift to this lane and a car coming from this direction it will hit my car and I should not pass the cars too quickly because if let's say I'm speeding up let's say if it's not a foggy day let's say it's just a rainy day and then I have a puddle over here a puddle of water and then I drive over this puddle this will push the water of course toward the cars coming from this direction then those, then those cars might be uh, affected by this action maybe they lose control or something so that's why you should not pass cars quickly uh, during bad weather conditions in normal cases as we, we spoke in the previous sessions that we should maintain 
the uh, two seconds equation however uh, in foggy weather you have to follow the three second equation now let's talk about um, the traffic lights with arrows here we see a condition like we have three lanes each lane is going to a different direction so this car is trailing left so it's keep on the left signal on and this car is turning right so it keep on its right signal on this car is just going straight so no need to keep any signals uh, just remember that when you approach such uh, traffic light maybe your lane is green let's say so maybe it's green for this car to go but maybe it's red for this car so the cars coming to the uh, so the cars going to the left they should stop at this signal over here however if let's say it's uh, green for the other cars as we have in this case it's green for the cars to go right then they don't have to stop of course they, and they can keep on driving also as you can imagine we have traffic lights for the uh, light mopeds and bicycles and they must adhere to those um, traffic lights as long that they're driving on the bicycle lane uh, even the broomfisters so the mopeds they should also follow the bicycle uh, traffic signals if um, they're allowed to use this cycle lane as we agreed so we have the sign that allow the mopeds to drive on this lane then they should follow these signals as well however the motorcycles um, they are not allowed to use the cyclist lane at under any condition and they must follow the normal traffic lights now let's talk about um, those reflectors uh, those uh, are telling me that there is a train coming so how I know that uh, so how I can calculate the distance each line as we agreed before is 80 meters so if I can see two lines it means I have 160 meters till I reach to the uh, train tracks and uh, just notice over here that when the line is into this direction you can see also the top of the reflector over here is into this direction same thing over here of course you should uh, just remember like 80 160 240 so it will be easier for you when you uh, come to the exam than just uh, calculating or something it's just three numbers that you have to memorize one line is 80 two lines 160 three lines is 240 till we reach to the train tracks now another type of the signs at the level crossing that we should uh, always consider is the traffic lights here we see uh, that this car is approaching the train tracks here we have a barrier and we have those signals that we are going to discuss here we can see of course if it's red so it's either be continuous red or it could be blinking so in this scenario I'm not allowed to cross however if let's say there are no lights at all it means I can cross or let's say if there is a white light I should cross quickly um, so those are the signals that we have at the train crossing or a level crossing now a few things to remember uh, we just mentioned those maybe but those are important so we will repeat those again quickly you're not allowed to drive with one of your car lights is off even if you are driving during the daytime so of course you are not allowed to drive if both lights are off but let's say maybe you will think uh, I have only one light is not working but the other light is working cannot drive the answer is no always try to carry extra light bulbs and a torchlight so uh, maybe um, you face a problem with the light so always carry extra light bulbs or maybe torchlight with you for emergencies dim light can be used during night and day no problem and as we said you're only allowed to use the high beam when there are no other users coming from the opposite side regardless of those road users uh, are uh, drivers pedestrians or animals doesn't matter and as we said, uh, the rear fog light can be used only if the visibility is less than 50 meters. Otherwise, I'm not able to use, or otherwise I'm not allowed to use my rear fog light because um, it's really uh, disturbing for the other road users. 
And as we mentioned earlier, uh, I'm not allowed to use my rear fog light during heavy rains. However, uh, I can use the front fog light. Now let's talk about accidents. Let's say um, I had a minor accident, so I just have a scratch on my car and maybe a little dent on the other car. Uh, here you should always clear the vehicle of the road to help the uh, traffic to move smoothly because let's say you had an accident and then the police came and you still have your uh, vehicles on the road uh, then you will have maybe additional fine so always park your cars in a safe area let's say uh, go to a parking lot or uh, put your cars in open areas where it's not bothering the other road users also let's say um, you had uh, a little accident and you tried to exchange the insurance information uh, with the other drivers so don't do this in the middle of the road of course this is uh, dangerous instead you both go drive somewhere where it's uh, safe for you to do such a thing always find a safe parking lot park your cars there and then discuss and exchange the information over there now let's say you are driving down the road then uh, you have a tire puncture or a tire burst uh, what do you do in such case in such a scenario never hit the brakes uh, if you hit the brakes maybe you cause the problem to be much worse this will maybe force the vehicle to go into some direction that you don't want it to go so the first thing you should do is hold the steering wheel with both of your hands then lift off your foot from the accelerator this will help the car to slow down by itself. The gravity will take care of the scenario. So the, the car is heavy by itself. And then you have this punctured tire. It's not really going uh, very smoothly on the road. This will help the car to stop. So hold the steering with both of your hands and then direct your car to a safe position, maybe to the emergency pit or maybe to a parking spot if, if possible. Let's say uh, there is no uh, parking spot available but uh, you are driving very slowly let's say this is not advisable this is uh, will create a much bigger uh, problem for the car maybe it will create problem for the axles of the car or maybe the rims so uh, it's not advisable to drive your car when you have punctured tire you should always stop somewhere safe and try to change the tire now let's talk about <laughs> scenarios that we, we might face in the Netherlands uh, which is falling into water the first thing that you should do let's say you lost control and then your car is hitting directly into the water then in this scenario you should always start your lights on this will help the rescue team and maybe the other road users to see your car of course you have to lose your seatbelt in such a scenario so you can leave your car uh, open the side window if it doesn't work force it to open meaning try to break the window using the safety hammer the safety hammer is just a hammer uh, for you to break the window you can see it maybe in the uh, metro or in, in the bus you can see it uh, hanging there telling that this is the safety hammer also maybe you can carry it with you in the car and in case you have such a scenario this will help um, to break the windows now let's say that your car started to fall into the, into the water then you have to leave immediately don't try to wait inside the car or don't try to uh, <laughs> drive the car maybe you think that you can drive it to a safe place that won't happen so always uh, when the car hits the water always try to leave as soon as possible exit the car through the window facing in because if you are facing outside uh, the water will come inside the car and it will uh, bring some other things with it or maybe um, it will come inside your uh, mouth and nose so always face in exit the window and try to swim outside the car remember that the car sinks slowly so it's not like uh, a piece of iron you just throw it it will go directly to the bottom no it will take time for the car to sink so you have some uh, time for you to exit the car don't panic just uh, think about the things that you should do and start doing them in such a scenario of course you are you won't be able to open the doors because uh, the water pressure will be very high no matter how strong you are you won't be able to open the doors 
So that's why you should always exit through the windows. Now let's say um, you're approaching an accident. Just keep in mind that uh, drivers will be curious and maybe they will slow down to check what happened over there, uh, what's going on. So this itself might create another accident. So it's better to just change lane or slow down and focus on the road. Now let's say we have an accident, God forbid. Then the first thing that you should do is to make sure uh, to grant your own safety. And then when you make sure that you are safe, you can start helping others. And as we said, uh, it's not safe to fill out the insurance company information in the middle of the road. So let's say I have an accident over here and there is another car over here. And then we are talking here, like whose fault is it? Uh, and we are talking here about like, okay, my insurance will cover no problem. Uh, you fill up the details, you fill up the form. If you do it in the middle of the road, uh, first you might again fall into another accident or maybe you will create problem for the other road users, like you will slow down the traffic or something. Bring damaged vehicles to a parking lot or empty areas. You must not unnecessarily obstruct the flow of traffic. So this is very obvious, of course. And if you need any assistance, you can always call 112. Now, before calling for help, you should always know the following information. So once the person on the other side of the line will take the information, they will be able to assess the damage correctly and they will be able to help you better. So always you should know the address of the accident. And we spoke about hectometers, if you remember. So if you are on, on a highway, you can just check the hectometer and tell the uh, name of the highway or the number of the highway with the number so they can send the rescue team to the correct location. You should always also know the type of the accident. Is it a car with a truck? Is it a car with a car? Is it a car with a deer? And when did the accident happen? Maybe you're calling after an hour from the accident. Maybe you lost consciousness and you woke up and uh, you don't know what happened, then you, uh, you, then you called 112. Also, you should know the number of the uh, people who are injured. So if uh, one person is injured, nobody to call for a hundred ambulance. But let's say there are 50 people injured, there is an accident on the bus and we have 50 people injured. Then if you ask for an ambulance, maybe they send only one car, which is not enough. So always this is a very important information to provide while calling for help. And just remember, no matter what, you're not allowed to leave an accident scene without reporting. Even if the damage is very light, um, even if there is no damage, then you should always report an accident. Also, anyone can face this scenario. Maybe you're trying to park your car and the parking is a little bit too tight. And then maybe unintentionally you cause some damage to a parked vehicle, meaning like you scratch or maybe a dent or maybe a bigger damage, we don't know. So let's say you damaged a parked vehicle. In this scenario, you should always uh, leave your insurance details on a paper and leave it on that car. Uh, of course, with your name, the number and the registrations, uh, information about your car. You leave it on that car, then you pick up your phone and you call the police, you tell them, um, what happened with you and how the accident happened and then it's fine uh, maybe the insurance will call you later on to reconfirm with you so um, that person will be contacted also and they will fix the damage on his car so again we should never leave uh, an accident scene you should always report to the police no matter what even if again the damage is uh, very little now let's talk about starting first aid procedures for the driver so we had an accident over here and here we have the people helping this driver to escape the car and they're trying to assist him. First, we have to check if he is bleeding, if he's suffering from any broken bones. Uh, second, we have to check if is he breathing normally. And third thing, we have to check if he's shocked. Now remember, if you ask anyone after an accident, if they are shocked, they'll deny it. They'll say, no, no, I'm fine. I'm not shocked. So you have to know if they are shocked, how we know they have like, uh, they will look like they have cold, like um, they will look yellowish and they will have maybe trouble speaking. Um, 
they will be slowly breathing so all those are signs to tell us that this person is in shock <clears throat> now let's talk about initiation of first aid procedures for injured persons in the side of the accident as we said you have first to check yourself before you help others make sure that you yourself are completely fine then you can start helping others and as we said check the injured people around you check if they have consciousness if they lost consciousness are they shocked so um, this are vital information to have before you call uh, 112 then you have to check the injured people and help assess their injuries how do you assess their injuries check if uh, the heartbeat is uh, normal check if they are breathing normally and check if they are bleeding of course before you provide any help you should be an expert and uh, if you are licensed it would be much better because you'll be the person in charge in most cases people just want to help and maybe someone is just trying to uh, help another injured person then he will create a bigger problem for them uh, sometimes it could lead into death so if you are not really sure about uh, this those type of things uh, then let someone else do it Now let's talk about accidents with wild animals of course animals is irrational being so uh, maybe you hit an animal and you're trying to help this animal uh, That's why they tell you when you hit an animal don't try to help by yourself Just observe from far away because maybe your intention is good. You want to help them, but they become uh, aggressive because they don't know if they want if you want to help them or maybe you want to injure them more so uh, animals are irrational beings we don't know what to expect from them an accident with animals is always considered on the basis of the cause of the accident of course being the animal not the driver as we said animals are irrational maybe I'm just driving no the, down the road and then suddenly the deer jump in front of me of course it's not my fault all accidents with animals are caused as we said by animals coming to the track of the drivers so I'm driving down the road animals suddenly show up in front of me that's why I have an accident most of the accidents are like that Like any type of accident, also you are not you are not allowed to leave the accident scene. Always you have to report and tell the authorities about the accident. So let's say you hit let's say a deer. So the deer got scared and it's bleeding and the deer ran away. So um, you saw the deer walking. You think it's fine. Maybe you can continue on your way. Uh, but this deer was bleeding and uh, heavily injured. So um, it need assistance that's why you should always call and inform authorities let's say you had some damage to your car there is um, animal compensation fund that can fund those kinds of accident and help you to uh, fix your car uh, of course if you have comprehensive insurance the process will be much more easier uh, if you have third-party insurance then uh, it might take longer maybe you need some proofs maybe it will take time but if you have uh, a comprehensive insurance the insurance company should take care of everything and uh, they should fix your car and there will be uh, much less trouble now this is pretty much the end of our uh, session let's test our knowledge and see what do we remember from today's session uh, what is this light called in the car we see a car over here we can see the lights and we are talking about this light of course this is the rear fog light and we are trying to show it up over here it's much brighter than the normal light so if the lights are on maybe they look like this but this light is, it would be very bright that's why it's very disturbing and you should not turn it on of course uh, in rainy weather what is this light called in a car those are of course the dim licht so this is the dim light the normal headlights the normal uh, lights that we use uh, in most cases now we have the scenario over here we have a person walking and we have someone using the high beam are you allowed to use the high beam here and of course uh, you are not allowed because you have a person 
uh, on the opposite side of you so you should not use the, your high beam now we have this scenario you are driving on the street with a lot of trees and there is a little light here what light will you use now there is a little light over here then you start your, your using your uh, dim light uh, if you still cannot see properly using your dim light um, then maybe you can turn on your high beam if you, the visibility is very poor and you cannot really see where you are going uh, but in most cases if your dim light are enough uh, then it's enough for you to use the dim light now we have those scenarios we have in this car the dim light is damaged can we drive of course we cannot now in this car we have the brake light is damaged can we drive of course we cannot drive in such a scenarios and now my friends as usual i leave you with uh, some important terms that we use through today's session and maybe uh, it will be helpful for you to uh, memorize and learn those words in dutch and uh, maybe in english as you know by now you can always pause the screen in case you need more time uh, to read and check those words and that's pretty much it thank you very much for watching uh, see you in the next one